Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the New Covenant Apostolic Church of Holly, Michigan. Our message today is titled, The Truth That Endures to All Generations. In Psalm chapter 100 and verse 5, the Bible says this, For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. This scripture makes a very powerful statement. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. The question that Pilate asked in John chapter 18, verse 38 to Jesus is this. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? This is the same questions that many, if not all people today in the 21st century, they are still asking, what is truth? People search for truth in many different ways. It is in us to want to know truth and to worship something because that is how God made us. There is a vacancy in our hearts that only the one true God can fill and satisfy. Psalm chapter 145, Verse 16 said this, Thou openest thine hand and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. From the very beginning of humanity, humans have worshipped many false gods by way of idols, images. Some even worship different animals, the stars, the sun, the moon, and many more different cultures have developed many different religions and many different gods, all in an effort to find the one true God, their Creator. God set the record straight in Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 10, 11, and 12. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting King. At His wrath, the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall you say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens by His discretion. God plainly states through His prophet Jeremiah that all of the gods that have not made heaven and earth shall perish from the earth. When the Apostle Paul went to Athens, his spirit was stirred within him when he saw the entire city given over to idolatry. In Acts chapter 17, verse 16, the scripture said this, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. He wasn't intimidated, but felt compelled to preach unto them Jesus and the resurrection. Acts chapter 17 verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him. And some said, what will this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached out of them Jesus and the resurrection. The people in the city of Athens had never heard anything like this before. Amongst all the idols and false gods that the people of Athens worshipped, Paul found one altar with the inscription, to the unknown God. This was Paul's starting point to bring the truth to Athens. Paul boldly proclaimed that they too could find the one true God if they would only seek Him. Acts chapter 17 verse 27, the scripture said this. 
that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. When Paul testified about the resurrection of Jesus, many mocked, but some became devout believers. Acts chapter 17, verse 31 to 34, the Bible said this, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysius the Areopagite and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. We are so very blessed today to have the Word of God preserved for us and right at our fingertips so we can read and find out really what the truth is. First, let's define what truth really is. Jesus told us what truth is in John chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. In Psalms chapter 119 verse 160, the scripture said this, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Thy word is true, and from the beginning. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8, the Bible said this, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The word of God shall stand forever. In Psalm chapter 117 verse 2, the scripture said this, For his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord is endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. The truth of the Lord endureth forever. God's word is forever settled in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Peter tells us in the first book of Peter chapter 1 verse 25, that the word of the Lord endureth forever. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The word of truth is the gospel which is preached unto you. Jesus said that we must live by the word of God in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now that we have established that the word of God is truth that abides forever, we read in the book of John chapter 1 and verse 1 that this word was God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was was God. And in John chapter 1 verse 14 the Bible makes this statement. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. This Word became flesh and was full of grace and truth. This is actually saying that God became flesh Jesus and was full of grace and truth. There's that word truth again. Jesus clearly states in John chapter 14 verse 6 this is what the scripture said. Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto 
the Father, but by me. Jesus stated that he is the truth. Jesus went so far as to say, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. His word, the truth, shall never pass away. Their heaven and their earth of the old covenant world, they were getting ready to pass away. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 and 10 and 13. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in a day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And then he saith, A new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. The words and promises of Jesus and this gospel message of the new covenant that Jesus came to bring us, they will never pass away. This gospel message is the truth that we can base our eternity on. Let us go on to the second part of the verse in Psalm 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. The word generation simply means all of the people born and living about the same time. We who have come to know and have obeyed this great life-giving truth of the gospel have a tremendous God-given responsibility. We who have experienced the new life that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ brings us have a responsibility to declare it to our generation. In Psalm chapter 145 and verse 4, this is what the scripture said. One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. It should be the goal of our life to tell of the power of the Lord and what He has done for us in our generation. There is no retirement in God. Psalm chapter 71 verse 18, the Bible makes this statement. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have shown thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. As long as we still have breath in these bodies, there is someone to tell. We are living epistles, known and read of all men. This is what the scripture said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. The psalmist in Psalm chapter 78 verse 4 makes this claim to not hide the praises of the Lord and His mighty works from their children, but to proclaim them to their children and to the generation to come. Notice what it said. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. And in Psalm 78, 6 and 7, the Bible makes this statement. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not 
forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. His faithful word is for all generations. Psalm 119 verse 90, the scripture makes this statement. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth, and it abideth. His mercy is on them that fear and reverence Him from generation to generation. Luke chapter 1 verse 50. Notice what the Bible said. And His mercy is on them that fear Him from generation to generation. With my mouth I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Psalm chapter 89 verse 1. And I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist even speaks about the Bible as the written word of God being preserved for the generation to come. That's us. Psalm chapter 102, verse 18. This is what the scripture said. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. We must be determined within ourselves not to let a situation happen like the one that we read about in the book of Judges, chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. Because they did not tell the next generation about the mighty works of the one true God, and his delivering power, the next generation rose up and knew not the Lord. As a result, they did evil in the sight of the Lord and served false gods. They turned their back on the one true God and got caught up in the worship of a false god. We are the salt of the earth. We must never lose our savor. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt hath lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. We are the light of the world. We must let our light so shine before men. Matthew 5 verses 14 and 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. In conclusion, we hold in our hands the Bible, the words of eternal life. It is the word of God that has been preserved for us. It is the everlasting gospel. Revelation 14 and 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. It is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the word of the Lord, which endureth forever. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 25, the Bible makes this statement. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. We must obey this gospel message that has been preserved for us for 2,000 years now. It has not changed. It will never change. We are still baptizing people in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins, just like the apostles did in the book of Acts in the Bible. We receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, just like they did in the Bible on the day of Pentecost. God is still pouring out 
the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost baptism today. We are witnesses of this, and we are declaring it to our generation. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Scripture said this, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Remember, when anyone crosses your path, God avails them an opportunity to hear the wonderful words of this life. Jesus died for all in the world, past, present, and future. If he died for everyone, past, present, and future, then they have a right to hear the gospel of salvation and eternal life. And if they have that right to hear it, we who have been called and chosen of God bear the responsibility to tell them, we must be born again, just like Jesus said, and just like the apostles preached on the day of Pentecost. In John chapter 3, verse 3, 5, and 7, the Bible said this, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The message that was preached on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 is the same today. Notice Acts chapter 2 verse 37 to 39 what the scripture said. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent! And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We, today, are the ones who were afar off. We, who have obeyed the gospel message, know that it is the true word of God that endureth to all generations. The blood that Jesus shed at Calvary is still here and available today and can be applied to wash away sin when we are baptized in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. God is still pouring out the Holy Ghost today just like on the day of Pentecost. We know because we have received it. As the Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 20 verse 27, this is what the scripture said. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. He said all of the counsel of God, not in bits and pieces. God doesn't want you to be part of a partial church, but he wants you to know all of the counsel of God. We must continue to declare this truth to our generation. Paul admonishes Timothy to find faithful men who shall be able to teach others what Paul had taught him. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. You cannot teach what you do not understand, and you cannot share with others what you personally do not possess. We must earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Jude verse 3 said this, Beloved, 
when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. If we today don't tell them, who will? If we don't live it before them, who will? There is an urgency in our message because people are dying every day without the gospel message of eternal life. This is the truth that endureth to all generations. That concludes our message in response to the truth that endures to all generations. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you enjoy the content on our channel, make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell icon for notification when we upload new videos. At the end of our lesson, you'll find a link to an alphabetized playlist of all of our Bible studies. Please take time to use this resource. It's there to share with you. If you have a question or a comment, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. Thank you and God bless you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been